a really interesting study that I've recently done is looking at the power of the lower body to create perceptions of approachability. So we talked about this orientation facing someone and orientating towards them. And we know from research that when you orientate towards someone, you're perceived as more approachable, you're perceived as more warm and inviting. And I wanted to see if, okay, well, what about the lower body? What if my upper body is facing towards you, but my lower body is facing away? And what about my foot specifically? Because we know that the lower body has an effect because studies have shown that the feet are honest. So when we're nervous, the rest of the body is saying, I'm fine, but the foot is tapping away because we think that people can't see it. So if we're trying to control for our behaviors, we think about my face, my hands, my upper body, but we don't think, okay, I've got to control my feet. We just kind of let them do their thing, which is why I was really interested to see if the feet carry any effect. And what I found was that using a male and a female individually um, as targets, so they had their upper body facing towards um, an observer, lower body either facing towards or facing away. And lower body facing towards, they were perceived as approachable. Lower body facing away, they were perceived as unapproachable. Statistically significant. But what was interesting is the sex of the target didn't matter. Sex of the observer didn't matter. What also didn't matter was how introverted or extroverted the observer was. The only thing that mattered was the foot orientation. And it just shows, you know, tiny behaviors, moving my foot towards or away from facing you can change how approachable I'm perceived. And that's incredible. And I did another study recently, and it actually came out with this open versus closed gestures that I've been talking about. But the finding was accidental because I wanted to see people's lower bodies when they were uncomfortable. So when they were in an interview and the interviewee and the interviewer was, you know, a bit out of order, said something too personal, something a bit derogatory that made the interviewee uncomfortable. And what we saw was this sequence of people make themselves small with their lower body. When they're uncomfortable, they bring their knees together, they tuck their feet below their chair. But it, it's important the sequence that occurred. So if I tuck my feet by my chair and then keep my knees out, that doesn't actually indicate discomfort. It's doing a number of these behaviors. So bringing my knees and keeping my knees and then tucking my feet and then keeping my legs closed, things like this, where you see multiple closing gestures. That's what indicates the discomfort. And interestingly, behaviors that we do associate with discomfort, like uh, we have blocking displays, so we kind of put our hands on top of our genitals and we feel attacked and we kind of protect ourselves. Um, and we, um, a lot of the time we do cross our arms when we feel attacked, but it isn't indicative of it. And that, that's a mistake. But it is something that we do, but it doesn't mean that when we do it, that is what we feel. Um, but we saw these blocking displays in all groups, comfortable versus uncomfortable, because of the context. So it was the interview causing some discomfort displays. But the tucking of the feet and the bringing the legs together, that was only to do with the interviewer making them uncomfortable. So again, it speaks to this um, importance of recognizing what displays actually mean. If we said, you know, any time they show a blocking display, they're uncomfortable and making them feel this way. If we just went off of that and said this one behavior means this one thing, we would interpret it differently. We would interpret it wrong because we don't take the context. And it's the same virtually. Interviews create more discomfort, so we're likely to see more discomfort displays. So does a virtual environment. If somebody is showing anxious displays regularly, despite you showing trustworthiness, doesn't necessarily mean you're making them uncomfortable. If everything else is saying, I'm comfortable, I trust you, but they are showing you know, a couple of displays, we see those behaviors in a virtual setting because it is unnatural. We just have to take it in the bigger picture. Are all of their behaviors or most of their behaviors showing me discomfort? Or is it just one? And then everything else is saying comfort. Because if it's just the one, that's likely to be their pacifier. That's likely to be the one thing that's their outlet. You know, I twiddle my pen sometimes, or, you know, a lot of people touch their face or jiggle their foot. And that's their pacifier. It has nothing to do with you, it has nothing to do with what you said. It's all the other behaviors that you have to take into consideration as a whole. We'll